Hello YouTube, this is sonic 2 kk here, and uh, welcome back to another Python tutorial, and this is going to be a slightly different uh, kind of Python tutorial thingy. This is going to be on creating graphical user interfaces, also known as GUIs. And uh, yeah, you know what a GUI is, I'm going to be honest, I hope you actually know what a GUI is, I really do, if you don't, I suggest you either check it out or maybe somebody in the comments could uh, tell you about it. Um, so yeah, what are we going to be using to create our GUIs? Well, you may know about uh, Python Qt or PyQt, which is good, but it only looks native, it isn't actually native. There's tkenter, which is is what the Python idle is written in, Python's idle, uh, and then, but it's the it's it's okay. And I've, been, I've been considering doing a tutorial on that, um, uh, and I probably will. Uh, there's PyGTK, but there's problems with getting that to run a Mac sometimes. Like I think you have to install it separately. But I think on Windows and Linux it's pretty straightforward to install, and I'm pretty sure in Linux it already comes pre-installed. I think Python also does. But uh, what other ones are there? There's PyGUI, but don't get into that. What's the other one? Can you guess it? Yes, it's WX Python. Yeah. Now, why WX Python? Well, WX Python is easy to use. It is simple, and it is native. It doesn't look native. It is native. It it uses. It tries to get everything to look as native as possible. So it it might not look as nice as Qt does. But it is 100% native. It is as close as you'll get to being native in uh, Python, except it's it's Python. It's it's basically like having a lot of control, except in Python. Now, I'm not going to cover any of the GUI builders, frankly, because I am against them strongly. Uh, and I think it's better to hand write all your code. Like, I just think it's better to hand write code. But uh. So we're going to be writing everything from scratch, and my main goal is to have a little text editor uh, by the end of it that has like syntax highlighting and stuff. Uh, that's going to be our main goal for this, and this is only going to be a different series, actually, now that I think of it, uh, like a tutorial series on it. Uh, and it might be a little bit like the new Boston's, but his wasn't complete. It wasn't like fully complete. There were some things he doesn't he didn't cover, and I hope to cover some of that stuff that he didn't. Uh, but I will be starting from scratch. So this is how you download it. You type in to Google or your preferred search engine uh, WX Python, and you will see this wxpython.org. Learning WX Python, and then there's a book on it as well, which I want to buy. And then stable or in development. You can choose whatever one you want. Uh, but some of the things might not work. Uh, and you download, you can download it for Windows, you can download it for OS X, or Linux. I'm not exactly sure how to download in Linux. I'm sure it'll be straightforward here. And if you're using Linux, you're probably uh, knowledgeable enough to make a banner yourself or install it from the command line. But uh, I use OS X, so you type WS Python 2.8. Don't confuse this with, like... The, WS Python 2.8. This is not uh, Python 2 uh, 2.8. This is WS Python 2.8. That is on uh, that is for Python 2.7. It is not supported for uh, Python 3.0. I don't think. Well, maybe the development ones are, but this one is not for uh, 2.7 and above. It is only for Python 2.7. I don't even think there is a Python 2.8. But that's beside the point. Uh, so what you want to do is you go here, you go once you have it downloaded. It's a DMG for uh, Mac, and I will take a guess that it's an MSI for Windows, an installer, because that's like the equivalent of a DMG. And once you want to down, once you have it downloaded, it should be pretty simple to install. And then go into Idle or Sublime Text or your whatever Python IDE. Uh, I want I must warn you though. Your code might not work. If you're using a 64-bit machine like I am, it might say that it can't run 60 or the 60 or it can't find 64-bit because for Mac at least, 
uh, it's using Carbon, which apparently doesn't like the Carbon API, which doesn't like 64 like 32 bit things to run. So you might have to run it from the command line by typing Python, whatever that py. I swear, that house phone, that house phone is going to like, oh, I feel like it's going over on them. And then unplugging it, and bam, problem solved. But I can't. <laughs> um, oh, this is terrible. Uh, uh, it's terrible. And I'm not even going to stop recording. And I'm like, Oh, I'm not like my hands or my face now. I'm like face palming because I'm in the middle of a tutorial. There we go. Stop it. So you might have to run it in the command line if you want your program to run. So once you have it installed, right, to just make sure you have it installed, type import wx. And this is the wx file that comes built in. Because now, now it is part of the Python library, like, it is in the Python build path of your link, which is where Python will look for its files. If it doesn't find it normal, I think it goes into where uh, Python looks for files, like the built-in files, and then it will go and look for files uh, in the directory where the file is, and if you can't find it, then you can't import it. So what you want to do is do that, and then you want to say app equals wx. Uh, app and this creates a new WX app instance. Like, uh, what is a WX app? Well, it's basically just your main application. This is this is a WX thing. And you want to say false. Now, what does this do? Well, this I think on the website it says std out and str, right? That is part of a C standard library. C is another programming language, and it basically has a thing called std out and stdr, I think. And if you get an error, it will or anything, it will redirect it into another window. And you don't want that to happen unless you're like a major code junkie and you want it to happen. But you normally want to have all your debug stuff printed in the command line using try and accept. So you make that. And then you want to say uh, frame equals wx dot frame. And then here you want to say, you want to say self as the parent oh no it's it's uh none because that's the parent like what is the parent object like uh if you had a frame and you wanted a button in it what would be the parent well you want the frame or you want the button to be in the frame but here we don't want anything to be the parent we just want the actual computer to be the parent the our computer monitor so you just pass in none which is the python word for like nothing it's basically the same as nil in lua and then you want to say the id negative one uh this is basically like an id that or you type wx dot id any or negative one basically does the same thing basically saying give it any id um and then the title lol and then the size um this is the parameter and you're setting it equal to if i say to 800 by 600 and then we're going to say frame dot show True. If we don't call this, then it won't show the frame. And we want to say app dot main loop, and this basically just runs the program. If we go here, that was from a different Python tutorial. Um, cd cd desktop programming Python GUI stuff. Uh, GUI stuff. WX Python. Python. I'm trying to remember the command line thing. Go here and list tutorials. So cd tutorials and python main dot py. And then this creates a window of says 800 by 600 with the title lol. Now I notice how it starts up here. This is 0, zero. Uh, If you've ever programmed in Love2D you'll know that. But if you want it to be in the center, you can say frame dot center, and this basically just centers the frame. That it centers it right here, here in the middle. Notice how it was up there and then moves it, and it centers it in the center of the screen. I think it does it from the middle so that it's like directly in the middle. So it, it's directly in the middle. Just trust it; it's in the middle. <laughs> then you can adjust the size and stuff. Uh, you do this. And it'll adjust. And notice how native it looks. It looks very, very native. 
and it, it just looks awesome. So uh, yeah, Let's, one more time recap: import WX, import WX, creates an app, and doesn't want we don't want to show any debug information. This creates a frame object, which is just like a a window. A frame I should have probably said this: a frame and a window are the exact same thing. Uh, so frame window I might say it differently. It's the exact same. Uh, so frame WX dot frame, which is like is basically a window. So none. What part do we want it to have? No, we just we don't want any part. We just want it to be the screen of our monitor. We give it an ID of anything, uh, unless we want to give it a real ID, which normally we don't. This sets the title and this sets the size. We can also set the position, uh, but we're calling center. So this shows the frame, this centers it, and this runs our application, which will make all our windows run. This is like the ball, right? Think of this as like a bubble, and everything, like all our GUI stuff, goes inside the bubble. Uh, yeah, it's our application, our main application that we want to run. Uh, yeah, normally you'll have this in a class, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.